So to keep our distributed systems efficient and performant, we have to ensure that the messages that are sent within the network, they take up the most efficient path. We may think network, uh, graph, efficient path and shortest path. Can we not use a traditional shortest path algorithm in this setup? We cannot. We cannot do this because it is distributed system. There is no single node that holds the information about the entire topology. Every single node simply knows about its neighbors and the incident edges like the edges that are coming in or going out. That's all it knows about. Hence, when we are devising a solution, we have to take extreme baby steps to even think about how to proceed to the next, to the next step. Right? In this video, we take a look into a variant of a famous Bellman Ford shortest path algorithm and see how it operates in a distributed setting. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focus group of 50, 60 engineers, every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning nine cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream 11 and many, many, many more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toy load balancer to Greek buzzers live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you're looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course, which you see on the left side. And the second one is the recorded course, which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks. While the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. So determining the shortest path in a distributed system is critically important right? because it finds its use case across so many things and whenever it talks about performance of delivering messages, you think about shortest path first. Right? So some of the functionalities that it powers really well or we need shortest path algorithm to power them are, let's say you want to deliver a message to a specific node. Given that you don't know the entire topology, how would you do that? That is why you first construct the shortest path from a single node to all the vertices and then you send it across that. And second is when you'd want to do an efficient routing in a P2P network. Again, a shortest path system would come in. Then an almost entire decentralized architecture like internet, if I want to go to that mega scale, it works on this very similar algorithm like not the entire internet scale but on subscales of that it operates exactly like this so when we talk about shortest path the first thing that we have to definitely throw out of our head is it's not just about the distance it can be about anything and everything in between for example if two nodes of a distributed system are connected via communication line a lot of things could go wrong first of all the connection line can be congested so the weight of the edge can determine the congestion level of the network or of that particular connection line. Then it may be the communication overhead. Maybe one node or one edge has having capacity of 10 GBPS while other has 50 GBPS. So that could be a factor. So when you are doing the shortest path, it's not just the distance. It could be congestion or rather it could consider congestion, communication overhead, expensive communication channels, third party cable infra and whatnot. So for example, if you have two, two 
two basically fiber optic uh, uh, cable providers one giving you something another giving you something if you route packages through some other vendor it might charge you 20000 let's say 20000 dollars per terabyte or something like that while other one is giving you 10000 so even so even it has monetary benefits right so when we th think about shortest path it is not just the distance it is not just the time could be n number of factors that you may want to optimize on so depending on what you would want to optimize on that becomes the weight of the edge and the idea is to go for the shortest path so that you are efficient performant cost efficient and what not whatever you want to add you can do that right so as a general problem statement we say that each edge connecting the two nodes in the distributed system has a weight assigned and this weight is a quantification of cost slash congestion slash distance slash time slash capacity whatever you want to do right the idea is to do this thing very efficiently when nodes would need to communicate and node needs to know how to do that right okay now coming to the problem statement like unless we define a good problem statement, we will not be able to understand the solution so coming to the problem statement in a distributed network what we are trying to do is where the nodes are connected via edges having some weights assigned find the shortest path from a specific source to all the nodes right because anyway we are doing this distributed setup we are anyway traversing through all the nodes why don't we just find the shortest path to all of them which is where Bellman Ford in our in our graph slash uh, data structures course you would find that relevant. You would have thought ki, why are we even doing that? This is the reason we are doing that. Distributed systems has great applications for the Bellman Ford shortest path algorithm, right? And the shortest path is the path with the minimum weight. That's it, right? Okay. Now let's look at how Bellman Ford algorithm beautifully sits in a distributed setup. Now here, just as a disclaimer. It's a distributed network, so no node knows the entire topology or weight. Everyone just knows the weights of the incident edges to it and the total number of nodes in the network. That's all. So if a network has 10 nodes, a node, every node would know that the network has 10 nodes and every node would know the edges that are coming to it or going out of it. That's it. Right? Now we have to devise a shortest path algorithm. Okay. And to be honest, this is the beauty of distributed system where you have very limited information, but you still need to achieve something, right? Okay. The algorithm that we are discussing is synchronous in nature, right? Which means that it proceeds further in steps synchronously or in rounds. So how they do it? It's irrespective. There are algorithms to do that. It could be clock based or basically time based synchronization where everyone does it like every one second they would move forward or it could be another message passing that could be happening. But somehow synchronicity is maintained. It, they can be a series of algorithms to power that. That's a different discussion altogether. But this algorithm, the core of it is it moves synchronously forward. Like every node moves synchronously forward step by step. Right. And this is where it is extremely important. Like this is how uh, synchronous algorithms are built like assume that things would move synchronously forward and then build it how you achieve synchronicity that's a different problem right okay so now every node knows n and the weight of the edges incident to it now what would they do so classic Bellman Ford implementation but in a distributed setup so now because we would want to find out the exact path and the shortest path, like the exact shortest path rather, <laughs> the exact shortest path that you would want to find out. So what every node would do is every single node would keep track of a distance, some variable called dist or some quantification called dist, which is, which represents the distance, the shortest distance of that node from the source node. Now the source node could be I0. Let's say I0 is initiating the shortest path to all the nodes it would know that hey i0 did it so every node will keep a track of the distance the shortest distance of that node from the root node which is i0 it would store it in the dist variable variable uh, uh, it can be persistent storage on disk anything it just maintains dist there right now what we do is classic bellman Ford use case we start with that distance of i0 from i0 is 0 right obviously distance to the self is zero and distance to any other i or any other node from i zero is equal to infinity because it the node is the nodes are still not reachable 
right so every other node is setting it to infinity now at each round what happens is steps are pretty simple at each round every single node sends out its disk to all of its neighbor right so in round one every single node every single node participating it sends out the disk that it has to all of its neighbors so i zeros disk is what zero so i zero will send zero to every single node that sits in its neighborhood right and then every other node because they all have disk as infinity they would send infinity to their neighbors right and this is what happens every round now when a node receives a message now what would happen so let's say a node i received a message from j what it would do is it would relax how what what's the idea behind that that when it received a distance from j like the dist from incoming node j what it would do is it would compare two distances first the distance that it has which means the distance that it has seen up until now the shortest from i0 it compares it with the incoming distance now incoming distance is j the weight of the edge it would know because every node only knows the weight of its incident edges so the node would know the weight of this incident edge so it would do incoming dist plus weight of this edge and it would compare it with its own dist right so if the incoming distance plus the weight is less than the distance that it has already seen which means that there exists a much shorter path than what it thought it was so it would update so this is the relaxation step that we all studied in the bell one for this is exactly how it's implemented in a distributed setup right so it computes that and now when this happens right so after a node receives incoming dist from all of its neighbors it does it basically does this what it does it continuously keeps on updating and eventually it would have the minimum value of what it has seen from its neighborhood so it would have the minimum distance from i0 and it would be revising after each round of iteration right now this is how a node would know about the distance now how would you know the path of it which is where every node also keeps track of parent the job of this parent would be that if my distance relaxes then i would update the parent right so if let's say i had some distance from a particular node but now i let's say i've seen a better distance like distance plus weights edge combination i've seen it better i will update my parent whenever i can relax my distance and this is how every node would also know about the shortest path from i coming from which parent it would not know the entire path it would just know that from this parent i would receive like I, i am in the shortest path from i0 via this parent or via this other node and this is really important of a step in a distributed setup because no node knows the entire topology which is why you have to take this extreme baby steps when you are devising the algorithm right and now you can very clearly see that when we are continuously relaxing or when we are continuously uh uh updating the minimum distance at each node after n minus 1 rounds what would happen is the all the messages across all the nodes would be sent or sorry all the distances across all the nodes across all the rounds will be sent to all the nodes now this way what would happen is every single node after n minus 1 round would contain the shortest distance from i0 and the parent variable at each node would contain the parent like from i0 to that node we are which parent right this is what we would have after n minus 1 rounds and post that and post that there would not be any further relaxation and this is why every single node should also know n because that's would it would know that the algorithm basically terminated right okay and this is a classic distributed variant of the famous bellman ford algorithm for shortest path and this is why now you know that why we need a single source all node shortest path algorithm 
because in a distributed setup the communication itself is so costly that while you are doing that you would want to do it all rather than just doing it for one node right okay now quickly uh, uh, quickly concluding this video on the complexity analysis of this approach because we saw that it would take n minus 1 rounds to complete the algorithm and every node would know what n is Every node would know that round one is done, round two is done, round three is done. That's how your algorithm would stop. That's why it's important for all the nodes to know n, the total number of nodes in the system. Right? So the time complexity of the system is order n because where n is the n number of networks, you take n minus one round. So order n is the time complexity of it. Right? Now, because at each round, what is happening? Every single round, every single node is sending message to all of its outgoing edges. So the communication complexity, which means the total number of messages exchanged would be equal to the number of rounds multiplied by the number of edges that you have. So n into e, like order of n into e is the communication complexity of this algorithm. Right Now, obviously there are ways to reduce it if you'd want to, but you might not need to right order of n comma e is the shortest power is the communication complexity of this approach while order n is the time complexity of this approach now it's important to understand these complexities because in distributed system this is extremely critical the communications are extremely costly so optimizing on that really important knowing which to use when extremely important and that is it about shortest path right i hope you had fun understanding how things work in distributed setup how we have to take baby steps whenever we are moving forward otherwise it's it's going to be fully fully chaotic right and that's it for this video right so if you guys like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub i post three in-depth engineering videos every week and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton